I I I want to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, my journey as well. It's not as fascinating and inspiring, but um, I'm trying to do a little bit uh, whatever I can for cheese and India. So we started the cheese. Uh, I started the cheese collective back in uh, 2013, but my cheese journey kind of began when I used to. Uh, work and volunteer at a cheese store in New York called Murray's and ultimately I did a cheese boot camp there which was 65 cheeses three days morning to evening eating cheese talking about it and just just totally immersed immersive cheese experience and after those three days everyone around me were cheesed out but I could eat more cheese and that's when I knew that I need to, this is what I love and this is what I need to be doing. And I moved back to India and started the Cheese Collective. We're making fresh cheese, uh, fresh cream cheese, fresh goat cheese. And we curate cheese from cheesemakers across the country, uh, as well as certain imported cheeses, but with a focus on indigenous Indian cheese. And, you know, cheeses like this, this special camel cheese, uh, trying to help communities as well as, you know, try and make all the customers happy as well and uh, you're right indian indian palates are uh, quite different they want that spice and kick and garlic is definitely a crowd favorite but um, moving on to this uh, also i wanted to really thank um, elizabeth again what what that whole cheese uh, timeline and map is uh, is just something super special. I really want you guys to check it out. And so, yeah, this is this is us today. We I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the cheese families. Um, just you know, when we think of cheese, we know that milk is the most important ingredient. The most important ingredient. Like, if there isn't good milk, you cannot make good cheese. You may have the best recipe in the world, but you cannot make a good cheese. The milk has to be good, clean, ethically sourced. And it's so important what the cattle is eating as well. Cheese is like a time capsule. What you're eating today, especially if it's an aged cheese, is a captured moment of a time of what the cattle ate, what the grass was, what the soil is, what the flowers that are grown are. All of that goes, all that goodness goes into the milk. And that is translated into the cheese. That is what natural artisanal cheese is all about. And, you know, one of my favorite quotes that is out here, cheese is milk's leap towards immortality. And it kind of plays on that whole time capsule thing. Uh, can we go to the next slide? This is just um, a little quick overview about, you know, you can just, you can just like glance through the ingredients and see how a natural cheese is just basic milk cultures, rennet or enzymes and salt. And look at the beautiful shapes and textures and colors just these four ingredients can give you. And when we come to processed cheese, it's got some percentage of cheese, but it also has a lot of other ingredients that are added to it. And the result is something that is uh, very, homogenous but it's also in the taste family you will you will have it'll be buttery it'll be creamy and it'll be salty but it won't have any of those um undertones of you know the varied tastes that you get and all those tastes are a lot to do with the milk and the cultures that we use so none of that translates through processed cheese which is very standardized uh, can we go to the next slide Thank you so much, Elizabeth, by the way, for doing this. Thank you for helping me with the slides. Okay, so these are a couple of ways to segregate or categorize cheeses. We have uh, the first one, which is according to the milk. So we have a beautiful example of camel milk. And there's also, you know, donkey, moose, and yak, which are some of the other harder milks to access. In fact, um, the tennis player, Djokovic, for one of his, uh, one of the years, I think it was 2000 and, uh, 2014 or 15, 
so for that year he bought the entire cam uh, donkey milk uh, donkey milk cheese of uh, of like there were two production units and he bought all that donkey milk cheese because he wanted to have the most expensive cheese at his restaurant and uh, why is it expensive is because you need a lot of milk to make that cheese uh, that's one of the reasons and plus the process is much harder than cow or goat or or sheep or buffalo so that's why they, these are all the varieties of um, milk. That's one way to categorize them. The other one is the kind of milk that you use, whether it's pasteurized, whether it's ultra pasteurized, whether it's homogenized or it's raw. Raw milk makes the best cheese. Then there's, um, there's rennet. There are different types of rennet and different methods of making, setting the cheese. Uh, I'm gonna go a little quick because I have a lot to share with you guys. Then there's the method of making. We're gonna get a little bit into that in the next few slides and where it comes from and what it, you know, what it looks like and what the texture is. Those are some of the categories. Let's start with uh, the fresh category. So when we say fresh, the word fresh in, especially in us, in, in our country, in India, there's always this, um, we, we always associate the word fresh with stale. So, oh, the food is fresh or it's gone stale. But in the cheese community, when we say it's a fresh cheese, what we're trying to say is it's a cheese that is young, a cheese that is made and immediately eaten. It's best eaten when it's immediately, you know, right after it's made. And it doesn't have a rind. A rind is a outer layer or a protective layer. Uh, we will get to different kinds of rinds uh, in the other slides. But this, you have to just keep in mind, a fresh cheese is a cheese that is young, it is unripened, doesn't have, it's not aged, and it is, it's, it's fresh because it's just eaten pretty much like mozzarella, you eat it immediately. Then there is uh, a fresh goat cheese, a cream cheese, even feta, it's a young, even burrata. So all these cheeses, even though they last for, anything from a day to two days to two weeks, they all fall under the fresh cheese category. And it's best to store them in the dairy compartment where it's cold in the fridge. That's one of the tips to storing them. Okay, next, this. This is a bloomy cheese, bloomy rind cheese. Um, this is one of my favorite uh, categories as well. So if you, if you, um, have ever tried or eaten a brie or a camembert or a rubiola? These are all bloomy rind cheeses. When I say bloomy, it's because when the cheese is made and it is young, and then it goes into the aging room, and the aging room is where it is an environment which is temperature and humidity controlled. So the cheese sits there and it ages for a couple of weeks depending on how long you want to age. Each cheese has a different condition and uh, protocol. So this one, say it's for a couple of weeks. When it's made, it's, it's quite bare. And then over the few weeks, there's a nice white rind that you know sort of blooms all over and around the cheese. And essentially, you're supposed to pat it down, flip it, rotate it, and all of that. Those are the care that you give to the bloomy rind cheeses. So the rind is essentially blooming. When you feel it, it feels very soft and velvety. And that's a that's like an example of a rind that has bloomed and you've patted down. Brie, camembert, robiola, humble fog is this um, American cheese that also falls in the same category. So that's why these are uh, bloomy rind cheeses. The rind is edible in this category. Now we go into the washed rind. Here, the rind, you can, you can see the earlier one was white, pretty much, snowy, snowy, velvety white. This one is a little bit crustier. It is got this orange and a reddish kind of a hue, kind of a color. And this is, this is because of certain bacteria. So, so also, all of this is a lot to do with the bacteria. Sorry, I forgot to tell you guys. I'm just so excited to share with you. So the bloomy rind cheese is a penicillium called penicillium candidum, uh, penicillium camemberti. Uh, and that's where camembert gets its name from. And here is the bee linens. 
brevi bacterium linen and that gives it this this kind of crust and protective layer so these this the apoise which is this which is a french cheese um is also sometimes washed with apple brandy so you're washing the rind with a brine with a solution it can be water based it can be a little bit of alcohol or another special mix so the rind is washed regularly whether it is patted for these kind of softer cheeses or if it's a bit of a harder washed rind or smear ripened whether whether rind is you know smeared essentially so these are just some key words technical words that i used to categorize these cheese families so yeah this these these are the uh, stinky cheeses as well they're known as the uh, stinky cheeses in fact if one of these one of these uh, cheeses if you plot the smell graph and you compare that smell graph to uh, cat's urine or smelly feet it's going to be pretty similar so that's that's kind of how stinky they are but they but they don't taste as stinky so they they're super delicious next can we go to the next one oh perfect yeah so this one is the semi hard cheese category these also have a rind but in this case if you notice with the emmental and the gouda or the gouda it's quite waxy so what happens is they make the entire wheel and then that wheel is dipped into hot wax whether it's red or black sometimes green depending so you dip it into into that wax and you remove it and then it's a protective layer so it's not it's not a natural layer of course because you're adding that layer with wax but it it helps protect what's inside and this one isn't edible now i want to talk to you a little bit about um these holes that are there in the emmental the emmental is 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 the most iconic cheese that ever is it's also known as the tom and jerry cheese and it's also when we when whenever we see a you know like if it, whether it's even like a, a cartoon image of cheese or a gif or any any image that is illustrated usually you'll always have this cheese a one with with holes now these holes in cheese is caused by the gas formation so when cheese is aging there's gases that are released and it needs to escape so that's where these holes are formed and they are actually known as eyes so they are the eyes of of cheese so the technical term for it is eyes so just something uh, for you to remember and this is the semi so now and now we go on to the hard cheese category now all those other cheeses that we saw the fresh one was a few weeks to 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 couple of days old then we had the bloomy rind which was a couple of weeks old the semi the semi hard or um you know the liable sorry was that some sorry okay so and that and then that then we had the semi hard cheeses that were you know that can be a couple of months to even a year or two years old but the hard cheeses are aged for much longer from a year to two to even four years like for example this gouda so we had a young gouda which was the previous one and we have this aged gouda and if we can just flip back to the previous slide we can see the color of these cheeses versus the next one you can see it's developed much more it's much deeper that was more of a straw yellow this one's more of a deeper yellow so with with uh, aging of a cow milk cheese this is what the color difference has each milk has a different kind of um kind of color usually uh, like goat and buffalo is pretty much stark white when uh, it is young and when it ages it has this grayish kind of tinge to it as well um it will be very interesting to know i i would love to know what would happen with a uh, you know with the camel milk i am not sure about that i would i'll ask that to you later but um coming back to the hard cheese these cheeses have the least amount of whey or water content because they aged for so long and the way they made as well so it's just um it's it's just common sense because it will last longer because it has less water content in it and the fresh cheese category has the most water in it so it needs to be consumed asap 
another um, fun fact about uh, Parmigiano Reggiano, which is uh, you know also known as the king of all cheeses, is there is there are certain um, there, there used to be a time where people could take a loan against it because it was considered you know so valuable. So that's that's a fun uh, little fact about it, and you can see the texture, you can see the crystals that have formed. That is also, you know, so, all part of the aging process. Both these cheeses have these white spots on it. And all of that is some sort of acid formation. So you know that this is an aged cheese. That's a sign of an aged cheese. You get that, that slight crunch as well. Now we'll move on to the last uh, family. Another favorite, you can just see how beautiful um, the color is, it's, it's again like a pale yellow with a strong river of uh, blue and uh, green and gray. Of course, uh, when, when you see it much closer, like when you see a close up, it's even more beautiful. So I want to tell you a little bit about uh, the blue cheese of, of cheese, blue family of cheeses. Um, this one is called Blue di Bufala. And the other one is the gorgonzola. And the blue, blue di bufala is a blue cheese made of buffalo milk. So it's really filled with a lot of fat and um, quite delicious. Now I want you guys to look at the holes that are there on the side of the cheese. So again, when the cheese is made, this one, and any of the, any of the blue cheeses, basically, when the blue cheese is made, there is, um, you know, for example, if it's a cylindrical shape or you know, a rectangle, it's kept in its, it's, it's young, it's got no rind yet, developed any rind yet, and it's kept in the aging room um, to age gracefully. And after, after a certain time, there are needles or steel needles that are inserted into the cheese and then removed. And what you're left with are these holes. And what happens is with, with the holes, there's oxygen that enters these trees. So what you're, what you're left with is um, the bacteria, which is the penicillin uh, Roqueforti. That's one of the, one of the bacteria. They have, um, you know, they have the perfect atmosphere, the temperature is perfect, the humidity is great, and they have oxygen now. So they're having a party, they're multiplying like crazy. And that's where all these beautiful veins are developing. So that's the you know, that's the blue cheese category. It's, uh, it's sharp, it's piquant. Piquant means it's a little, got a little spice to it. Um, not chili spice, but just a general piquant spiciness to it. But it's also buttery and salty. So it's, it's, it's a beautiful um, taste profile that is very underrated in India at the moment. So all these cheeses are uh, one of the ways to categorize them and you can call them cheese families. I just wanted to show you a little little bit about, um, can, sorry, give me good. Yeah, so I just wanted to show you a little bit about um, some of the platters that we make, um, especially this one is all, all the products and the cheeses on this platter, the, big, the bigger one, the one with the apples, is all Indian cheese. In fact, all these cheeses, we were actually doing a special class with um, a local Bombay cheese maker uh, called Mossam uh, of Elethria cheese. So we were doing uh, we were doing a cheese tasting of that. So it's just awesome to it's a, as a cheesemonger and as a cheesemaker, I feel happy and proud that there are so many cheesemakers now in the country uh, doing such amazing work. And to showcase that and to uh, present that in a, in a good way, in a beautiful way, and to, you know, sell, give it to the customers and, you know, showcase it in, in this manner is what makes me happiest. So just wanted to share uh, that with you guys as well. Uh, and the last, yes, this one is uh, a beautiful uh, display of all the beautiful cheeses of, of India. In fact, I want your eyes to go to the left and bottom most uh, cheese. It is, it, there, are, there are four four to five cheeses there, these cheese balls. Yeah, perfect. So those are Bandel and it's an indigenous Indian cheese. 
and it is smoky and salty. It's from the Bengal region of India. And we have had this cheese from back when the Portuguese um, kind of introduced that method of cheese making to us and used to be made in the Bandel region of India, but now it's uh, closer to Beng closer to Kolkata. But it's it's a it's a gorgeous cheese. It's technically a dairy product because of the method of making, but uh, you know it's it's we can include it in the cheese category as well. And uh, then I want you eyes to go to uh, another beautiful cheese. It's right to the left of the uh, of the mini flower. Um, it's the white cheese and it's round. It's called Kalari. It's in its um, in its own brown. Yeah, perfect. Yes. So that one is Kalari. Uh, again, super special. Kalari is very popular in Jammu Kashmir. It's a uh, it's a you know it's a northern cheese. It's been made since centuries, and we it's it's literally called dud roti, and it is made. You know, you know, when we flip a roti or a paratha or um, even in, in Gujarati, we have a bajraka, bajranu rotla. So all of that is flipped with, with that hand action. And that is also how this kaladi is made. And the way we eat it is you eat it in its own uh, fat. So you just fry it in its own, shallow fry it in its own fat and uh, best enjoy it with uh, with a local drink so that's those are two very special cheeses and every other cheese on this on this uh, in front of you is made in india and some are made as recent as a few years some are made since many years we have stuff from kashmir we have from bengal we have from uttarakhand we have uh, we don't have something from the farm in Chennai, but they make fantastic cheeses as well. And we have stuff from Bombay. So there's a there's a plethora of cheeses and there's, there's still many more yet to be discovered. There's many more that yet need to be documented. And slowly but surely, Elizabeth and I are going to do it with your help. If you ever come across anything, please get, uh, reach out to us as well. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, this is a little bit what I wanted to share with you. I hope you guys liked it.